Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Jerseys with Josh. I want to create the most informative and the most exciting game-worn hockey jersey channel on YouTube. Today, we've got a new video in the Hobby How-To series. We're going to take a look at some of the most commonly used terms in the hobby. If you're newer to the hobby, this is especially for you. There's lots to navigate. There's lots to know. And if you want to check out the unwritten rules of the hobby, check out this video. And hit that like button if you like the content. It really does mean a lot to me. Even better if you want to subscribe. Uh, I get excited every time I see somebody like a video or subscribe it. Very cool to see the channel growing. So with that said, hobby how to, let's go. All right. Theme number one is going to be around sharing lingo. And that's language we use when we're sharing on Facebook groups about our jerseys. We have lots of terms in the game worn jersey community. And I want to help you navigate our acronyms. So first on our list is JFS, NFS, and NFT. And what do these mean? So JFS means just for show. NFS means not for sale. And NFT means not for trade. And Oftentimes we use this when we're sharing a jersey that we really like, but we don't want to sell or trade. And in this screenshot here, you can see there's a bit of a bonus term in there. Uh, it says W slash A removed. And that means that the alternate captain A has been taken off the jersey by the team. And it could have been removed for various reasons. For example, if the alternate captain got injured and then this player got it for a few games, and then the alternate captain came back. And so the A was removed from this jersey. And so you can still see the outline of it on the jersey, but it's no longer on there. And so a little bit of a bonus there. Term number two is grail. Also, I've heard the term white whale used as well. Uh, not sure if grail comes from the Indiana Jones movies, uh, but it references a jersey you personally really, really love. So you might say if you're looking for a Gretzky rookie, that that'd be something I think most of us in the hobby would consider to be a grail. Um, that said, the term grail can mean different things to different people. So the jersey you see here was a grail for me because it was a Sabres jersey and it was from the Doreen era. More on that later. But either way, a grail is the term we use for a jersey that holds special significance to you personally as a collector. All right, term number three, one of my favorites is mail day. And we use this term to reference uh, the day when a new jersey comes in in the mail or via a shipping company. So it's one of the most exciting days in the hobby when a jersey comes in. And a lot of us post that same day and we call it a mail day. All right, on to theme number two, and this is all about the jersey. So there's lots of terms we use to describe a jersey, and let's talk through some of those. So term number four is LOA or COA. LOA stands for Letter of Authenticity, COA for Certificate of Authenticity, and it's sometimes also described as the provenance of a jersey, and this describes the paperwork that comes with the jersey to cert certify it's authentic. Please do remember, though, not all jerseys with an LOA are real, are authentic. And in that same vein, not all jerseys without ones are fake. So do your homework. Photo matching your jersey is really a great way to confirm its authenticity. Uh, and there's a bonus term here at the bottom. You might sometimes see MGG LOA, and that stands for the My Gray Group uh, Letter of Authenticity. It's just easy to abbreviate all of that. Uh, I've talked about Migray before. My opinion, the best in the business. Shout out to the Migray team. Thanks for all you do. Term number five is third jersey. Teams usually have a primary home and a primary away jersey. A third jersey, if you aren't familiar, is one with a special design that teams only use every so often. Term number six is photo and video matching. This is where you take a jersey that you have, you find the unique marks that are on it, and you then match those same marks that you see on the jersey to a photo of the player playing in that jersey or a video of the player playing in it. Uh, it's super exciting to be able to find a photo or a video match. Uh, it's kind of great validation that the jersey that you have is real. Uh, lots of people frame pictures of the player using the jersey next to the jersey when they have it up on the wall. Um, 
if you don't have an LOA, it, it again, it gives you that confidence that the jersey is authentic. Uh, now, another sort of cool piece is that you can uh, get either a photo letter of authenticity um, or maybe even a video letter of authenticity, depending. But I know uh, my grade does photo letters for sure. Um, but this was really cool. It's something that I never did before until this season, but I pre-ordered the jersey. And then what I did was watch the player playing in the jersey that I ordered. And so then as he was playing, I could look for and watch for marks as he was on the TV. Uh, and I would look at the images on Getty Images every morning the next day after the game. And it was really fun to be able to do that and sort of get a sense of those matches that I expect to see when the jersey comes to me. And it was incredibly fun. Highly, highly recommended. All right. Term number seven is one game wonder. And that's when a jersey was worn only for one game. Uh, usually they show pretty light wear. Uh, this is not my post, but uh, it's one where you can see the term being used. Uh, there's also the term one period wonder which often happens for special events like the All-Star Game or the Winter Classic, where lots of jerseys are used because they're highly desirable. On to term number eight, which is GI. That stands for Game Issued. Uh, that means a jersey was prepared for use but wasn't actually used in a game. Sometimes a player gets traded after the jersey is already made, or maybe they got hurt. Um, it's still going to be an exceptionally high-quality jersey because it was made for that a player to use in the game it just wasn't used for whatever reason and a lot of times these do have paperwork that come with them as well which brings us to term number nine which is all about materials so uh, you know wool is pretty pretty much as it sounds in the very early days uh jerseys were often made from wool i did a video uh recently i'll post a link up here uh, to a Ken Yackel Team USA jersey that was made out of wool from the 1952 Olympics. Super cool jersey. Um, there's also Doreen, which I mentioned earlier, and that was this kind of like almost shiny nylon cotton blend, which is a very cool material. It was often used in like the 80s, that kind of era. And then you get into the air knits, the polyester meshes that are uh, much more common today. And on to term number 10, look out, breaking out a chart for this one. This is all about how much wear a jersey has. So you can see at the bottom left, it starts with no visible wear, uh, just like how it sounds. Doesn't seem to have any noticeable marks. Um, then you sort of move up to the next notch, which is light wear. So you might see a few light marks on the jersey here or there, a little bit sparse. From there, you move into moderate wear, and now the marks are a little more common. They're more easily visible. Uh, and then the when a jersey is worn a lot, we use it. Uh, we use the term hammered in the hobby. So it's a jersey that's been through a lot, tons of puck marks or rips or team repairs, things like that. Very, very common in the early uh, game-worn jerseys where teams were using fewer sets, so they got used quite a bit and really sort of heavily marked up. Here, term number 11 is all about the different types of wear. So some common ones are team repairs, just like you can see on the screen here. You, you know, the trainer uh, re-sewed a rip that was in the jersey. Older jerseys have a lot more of this. Again, they were used longer, fewer sets of jerseys. Um, they had another example of a type of wear is board burn. So that's where a player rubs up against the boards and it kind of melts the fabric a little bit. Uh, there's also, you know, stick and puck marks and then pilling and pilling occurs usually on the inside of a jersey from uh, a player taking it on or off a lot where sort of equipment rubs on it. It creates these little like pulls or tiny balls kind of on the fabric. Uh, that'll a lot of happen. A lot of times happen on goalie jerseys where the the throat guard or the helmet will rub up against um, the, the 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 part of the jersey right at the neck. And uh, it really is uh, an interesting piece of wear. All right, term number 12 is patches. So these often make jerseys even more valuable because they tell even more of a story. Uh, an example would be a league anniversary, like the 75th uh, anniversary is a really popular one. It could be a jersey retirement. Uh, it could be a Stanley Cup finals patch. Uh, there's also, you know, double patches can be even more valuable. So I talked about this Gary Volk video, uh, sorry, this Gary 
Volk jersey in a previous video. This is an example of a double patch. They have the 2000 uh, All-Star Game patch because it was held in Toronto and the NHL 2000 patch as well. Uh, so I'll put the link up to that video if you want to check it out. But really love this jersey. Very, very cool one. So the third theme is around terms we use when buying or selling a jersey. And term number 13 is F and F and G and S. Uh, they refer to types of electronic payments where F and F is friends and family. Uh, there's less fees usually with that method, uh, but limited protection. I think no protection if something goes wrong. Whereas uh, GNS or goods and services offers you more protection as a buyer. So I know some of us in the hobby have been burned by going the F and F route to save a few dollars, uh, but it hurts for sure. Uh, I'm not suggesting one or the other. I'll let you do your research, uh, check the terms of use for whatever payment method you're using, and make sure you know to the best of your ability who you're making a deal with. And there you have it, three themes and 13 terms we commonly use in the game-worn jersey collecting community. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoy the hobby.